The following microbiology tests will be reviewed on this slide presentation. Gram stain, motility, EMB, McConaughey, carbohydrate fermentation, gelatin liquefaction, mannitol salt, indole, SIM, IMVIC test, triple sugar iron, skim milk auger, and catalase. We will begin with our gram stain. Gram stain's purpose is um, it's the most common used staining mechanism to differentiate bacteria. So gram stain is a differential uh, staining technique. The gram stain divides most of the bacteria into two main groups based on the amount of the sugar peptidoglycan that's present in the bacteria cells. Now when we look at this, this is a gram positive bacteria and we know that because it stains purple. It stains purple because it has a thick layer of peptidoglycan in its cell wall. So we can see that this is a gram positive bacteria. In addition, if we look at the shape of the bacteria, we can see that they are circular, therefore they are caucus, and we can see that we have these in chains, and that indicates that that's strepto. So we have streptococcus bacteria present, and we have gram-positive bacteria. Here we have gram-negative bacteria, and gram-negative bacteria stains pink. It stains pink because the cell walls are much thinner, the peptidoglycan layer is thinner, and therefore cannot hold the purple stain. So you can see our gram-negative bacteria. Again, uh, do remember that bacteria comes in three shapes that we talked about, the bacillus, the caucus, and the spirillium. And then our clusters were staphylo, where our chains are strepto. So here we have a chain of bacteria. They are rod shaped, so we would have a streptobacillus and we would have gram negative. Okay, one test that can be used to identify bacteria and the movement of bacteria is uh, a motility test. And with this, the media is inoculated with an inoculating uh, needle, looks like this right here. And uh, the motility uh, will be uh, read as either uh, growing out in the surrounding media, away from the stab location, or no growth at all. Now these uh, slides right here have been stabbed with an inoculating needle, and so we can test each of these and determine whether or not we have uh, modal bacteria. On this first bacteria right here, we do have some growth right along here. It's moved away from the stab, so this is a modal bacteria. This one right here, this is where uh, the needle stabbed into the media. Notice that we don't have any growth around here, so this would be non-modal. Our third test tube, you'll notice this thick layer of growth, so this is modal bacteria. So we have positive for motility, negative for motility, positive for motility. Here we have just a couple of more motility tests to look at, and you can see a negative just where the needle has stabbed um, the auger, and here we can see how the, the bacteria has grown out from the stab. EMB auger stands for eosin methylene blue auger. The purpose of this auger is that it is selective and differential. It's used for isolating and differentiating various types of bacteria. It is selective in that only gram-negative bacteria will grow, and it also contains lactose. So by looking at the color of the colonies, one can determine whether or not the bacteria ferment lactose. Clear bacteria, clear colonies, indicates no fermentation of lactose, while pink colonies will indicate lactose fermentation occurs. In addition to that, E. coli will develop a metallic green sheet of colony, and so EMB can very quickly identify for E. coli 
any time we see metallic green growing on the colony. So here again we have EMB auger. Now because we have the uh, growth on the plate, we know that this is gram-negative bacteria. Here we have the name of the bacteria being tested. And if we have gram-negative bacteria, we can also check for lactose fermenting. If we have pink colonies, and both of these are pink colonies, then we have lactose fer fermentation going on. So EMB auger tests for two different characteristics of bacteria. The first thing it tests for is growth. If we have growth on the plate, we have gram-negative bacteria. If we have no growth, then we have gram-positive bacteria. If the bacteria has grown, we will check the color of the colonies. Pink colonies means lactose fermentation. Clear colonies would represent non-lactose fermenting. So on this slide, we have EMB auger, we have growth, and so we know that this is gram-negative bacteria. We look at the color of the colonies, and these are clear, so they do not ferment lactose. Here we have McConaughey auger. McConaughey auger is both selective and differential, and it's used to differentiate between gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria. It is selective in that only gram-negative bacteria will grow. So looking, we have a non-inoculated dish. Here we have three dishes with growth. That indicates that all three of those are gram-negative bacteria. In addition to testing for gram-negative, the test will also identify uh, lactose fermentation or non-lactose fermenting. If we have pink colonies, we have lactose fermentation going on. If we have clear colonies, we have no lactose fermentation. So here we can see non-fermenting and we can see fermenting of lactose. Now, be aware that one does not want to run both McConaughey and EMB testing for unknown bacteria because both give the exact results and therefore you are wasting uh, test agents. If you are taking a class where you are graded based on the minimum number of tests needed to identify the bacteria, running both EMB and McConaughey could hurt your grade. The only difference one sees between the two is that EMB allows for quick identification of E. coli with that metallic green uh, colony, where in McConaughey it would show up as a pink colony. Here we have carbohydrate fermentation. Now with carbohydrate fermentation, we can test for glucose, lactose, or sucrose. Each of the test tubes will look identical. However, the sugar that has been added for the testing agent will vary. So this is a test used to determine the ability of an organism to ferment various simple carbohydrates. The small tube that is present and it is inverted is called a durum tube. It is able to trap any gas that's produced. The indicator phenol red will turn a yellow color between a pH of 6.8 to 9 and this is showing that we have fermentation going on. If we do not have that pH change it will remain um, the same color it began with which is a pink color. So here we would have 
uh, a pH uh, above 7 and we have no fermentation. If we have fermentation we would like to check and see do we have a gas bubble. If we do then we have gas production. So while reading the test an acid will be yellow and that's positive for metabolizing the sugar we indicate that with a positive. A color change has occurred. A negative will be no color change and we indicate that with a negative symbol. An acid that has gas production will be yellow plus we have a gas bubble present in the Durham tube and we indicate this with a positive and a circle and that circle indicates gas was produced. The purpose of the gelatin liquefaction test is to determine the ability of bacteria to produce gelatinase that digests liquefied gelatin. And so we inoculate our um, test tubes, we place them in the incubator, and then once the test tubes are inoculated with the bacteria and they're incubated, it will cause the gelatin to melt. In order to determine whether or not the reaction has taken place, the incubated tubes must be placed on ice. And they're placed on ice uh, until uh, they've, for about five minutes, and until a control sample would solidify. Now, a positive test would indicate that the, the gelatin is still liquefied, where a negative test, it has solidified.